comedy one about uh, laser squids. So, uh, uh, cartoon sea creatures with, with death weapons, you know. Right. Like SpongeBob meets Star Wars. They're right to sell. It's been a long time, but that is still my, my very faded and used phone case. It's from Laser Squid Nemesis. Hi, right. right, everybody. Uh, introduce yourselves. No, never mind. We'll skip that part. I'm Dave Manningly. Uh, we're looking at how we can use improv comedy, that skill set, tool set, process, uh, to improve our social engineering. Uh, the, the stats he mentioned uh, in the, the opening keynotes, uh, between 80 and 90 percent of, of breaches start from some kind of phishing, and uh, this can help us to do that if you're, you're on the red team or guard against it uh, on the blue or for the rest of us. Uh, and I keep hitting the, the backwards button instead of the forwards. Uh, I've done a bunch of things. Uh, NASA, I worked for Wolfenstein back in, 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 in Doom a little bit. Homeland Security, I'm at Baptist Health these days. Uh, for my non-tech, I was a, a radio DJ for a long time, owned a publishing company. I uh, preach for the Christian Gamers Guild at game conventions around. Do a lot of uh, data volunteering, uh, music things, a lot of stuff. Uh, earlier this year, I wrote my first uh, stage comedy. Uh, well, it was a skit thing, so you know I had one of the skits I wrote, and uh, it's, it's a lot of fun. I try a lot of things. Done. The, I have. I've had some minor parts in minor movies. Uh, I accidentally played a bouncer in a thing, so I have you know real world pretend bouncer experience. Buster, you better watch your stuff. <laughs> Improv comedy. Who has seen Whose Line Is Anyway or one of the other? popular ones, uh, who has been to an improv show in person of some kind. Uh, they're a lot of fun. Uh, I like them. I, I know I could not do stand-up. That's way too much pressure and memorizing, and how is, is this thing going to be funny for, for everybody when they're all different? And uh, that, that is, is really, really hard. But improv is just a conversation on stage with stuff that makes up. It, it's the things you do with the people that sit around you all the time anyway, you know. The, the primary rule is yes and. Uh, when you're in an improv scene, somebody says, oh no, the, the building is on fire, what are we going to do? You can't decide, well no, we're, we're uh, you know, on a submarine. Uh, no, no, the, the building is on fire. You have to join what has already been established. So I say, yes, it, it is on fire. Uh, and it's a good thing we have our uh, uh, marshmallow firing crossbows or something. You just uh, add something. <laughs> you accept what is there and then build on it. Uh, no idea gets shot down. Nothing is wrong. Well, they're all kind of wrong, you know, but, but that's the whole fun of it. You start by taking what you have, adding. You accept. The next one is to connect. You need to know who your audience is. Uh, if I'm you know, doing improv in front of a, a bunch of college students, uh, probably the humor might go different places than if I was performing uh, uh, at a church uh, or you know, at, at a, an AARP meeting or something like that. Uh, you know, I know who you're talking to. Uh, nothing is ever going to land with everybody, but uh, you don't want to make sure that uh, nobody is going to like it. You know? Improv is, is a team sport. Uh, you need to support your scene partner or partners. If your partner comes up with an idea, uh, wants to you know, help you carry this uh, uh, invisible dead giraffe, then uh, you need to grab the other end and help them carry the invisible dead giraffe. Uh, having improv people split up in their, their own different things, it's just been a... a Interfere with the scene, leave the audience confused. Nobody's going to have a good time. You're, you're all there doing the same thing for some reason. Direct. Uh, instead of just standing, I'm here and I'm talking, you're standing there, we're just talking back and forth. It's a lot more fun if we're moving, if we are building or doing or otherwise making our bodies be part of the scene as well. Project. And expect. This is the, the part that scares me. Follow the fear. Uh, as my, my old improv mentor, and I appreciate the soundtrack. Uh, that, that, that's wonderful. Uh, my improv coach uh, always used to say that uh, awesome is on the other side of fear. So, yes, 
it's scary when you think about it or when you do it for the first time, but when it's done, wow, that was great. And the more you do it, my comfort zone will go from here to here to here. You get a little more used to it, and maybe I bombed. Maybe I fooled myself. That's fine. It's all part of, uh, of life's rich packet, you know? And mistakes are gifts. There's a lot of times we'll do something wrong. Uh, or we'll get somebody's name wrong. Or I'll forget that uh, we are uh, in the getaway car. And uh, I, I decided I need to stop uh, uh, for a passenger or something, you know. Uh, when you do it wrong, that's just even funnier. Uh, people love it, especially your fellow improv performers. It, uh, it does sound scary, but there are lots of ways to get involved. There are many ways to keep yourself, keep your brain fresh. I had uh, a stroke. 15, 16 years ago. Uh, I had to learn to walk and talk again, and things like this helped make sure everything keeps firing. Uh, it, keeps, it keeps me thinking better, which means I can do all my other things a little better. There are, in Louisville, 30, 40 improv groups, something like that. Uh, most nights of the week, you can probably find a, a 5 or 10 to pick from, to go and check out. Most of them are sort of general purpose improv, but there are some that are specialized. The, the hystericals is an all-female troupe because they're funny, plus the hysterical, you know. <laughs> uh, that came from a biological thing. Uh, but but uh, they're always a lot of fun. There are other ways to, to keep yourself involved uh, creatively from a technical perspective as well. The 48-hour film project has been happening for 20-some-odd years. Uh, anybody ever worked on a, we have a release push, we have two days to, to work all night, get this thing out? It's like that, except you're making a film. Uh, you get your team together uh, beforehand, and you don't know what you're going to be doing, so you have to, well, what if we need a... a a warehouse. Well, I know this thing kind of took a warehouse, we could make it. Because you don't, know, you don't know what genre of film you're making until you start on Friday, you draw it out of a hat. Might be making a musical, or a silent film, or a period piece, or time travel. You get that, uh, everybody has 40 hours to turn in a finished film. Uh, I've been in a few of those, they're always a hoot. They uh, will show all these submissions. Uh, at Village 8, one of the local theaters. Uh, the audience can vote, and then the, the organizers help pick various winners, things like that. But the other trick is that uh, everybody draws a different genre, all the teams, but you all have three common ingredients. You have to have a, a same uh, character, you know, a, a name and a job, and a line of dialogue, usually pretty simple, like, what if you're wrong, or I don't know, you know something very easy to, to work in, and a prop. Could be a rubber band, a hose, something like that. Uh, it's, it's a lot of fun, uh, and uh, nerve-wracking and exhausting all of us. <clears throat> Start up weekend, we have uh, two of those each year here in Louisville. You go on Friday night, uh, pitch an idea, other people get involved. Yeah, yeah, I, I like that. Let's work on that. You build a thing, there's prizes. Uh, some of them turn into actual real businesses and go on. Uh, there are several hackathons, so you can use various tech skills. Uh, to volunteer, give back to the community. A lot of games uh, will help you out. One of my favorites here is Who Would Win? Uh, Jim, if you don't mind, could you uh, pick a, a person here? Uh, it, it only takes a few seconds to explain and less than one minute to play. Okay. All right. Uh, I have Horatio Nelson, uh, the British, uh, you know, full speed ahead. I have uh, Cleopatra, right. ancient Egyptian. All right. So uh, I have 20 seconds to say why Horatio would beat Cleopatra at. Oh, that's a blank one. Uh, at <laughs> lion taming. Or at poker. Or at figure skating. And then he'd have 20 seconds to, to say, well, no, Cleopatra is a lot better yeah, at figure skating than Lord Nelson was because of this and that. Yeah, he's got snakes. 
Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> You're like, you, you've intimidated me already. Yeah. <laughs> well, that's fun. No, my, my son likes this. Sometimes we'll do it in the car as, as we're driving. You don't have to think a whole lot about it. Uh, Once Upon a Time is a card game where you, uh, you're you telling a story and you interrupt, well, no, I have the, the card that says uh, dragons. Well, well, you're doing this, but then the dragon shows up, and you try to get out of your cards first as you're telling this common round-robin story. Word on the street, say anything, apples to apples, uh, flux, booty buff, list off. A lot of games will help your mind stay creative because you have to come up with answers a lot. One thing I like about say anything. There are a lot of, of games that will reward people who come up with clever answers, uh, and a lot, of pe- a lot of games that will come up with people who are good at, uh, you know, guessing a number or reading people. This is a little of both. Uh, I would draw a, a, a as judge for the round, I'd say, in my opinion, what is, and draw a card, you know, the, the, the best hair band or something. Everybody would write something down, and I have to draw, or I have to choose among those which my favorite hair bag is. It doesn't care what my, my favorite, what I have to pick from those, then all of you vote on what I picked. So the person that picked the one I guessed gets a point, and people who picked the one that they thought I would pick also get. So it rewards both kinds of players. Lots of cool books to stimulate your creative brain. How would you move Mount Fuji? This is a uh, a story interview question book. Uh, Microsoft uh, and a lot of companies used to use uh, and might still use this as weird interview questions just to, to see what your thought process is and how would you get to an answer. Uh, how do they make M&Ms? How would you test a salt shaker? Count in base negative two. Weird things like that to keep your brain going. Uh, uh, several others and I have links up on the site uh, a ways that you can help keep yourself creative. Public speaking at Toastmasters International. Uh, I did that for a very long time. Uh, anybody ever been to a Toastmasters meeting or, or heard of it? It's a chance to practice public speaking in front of, of other people who are also trying to get better at public speaking. It's a very, very friendly room. The nice thing is that you get instant feedback from it. Everybody uh, will write on, on, on a little paper, I mean, here's a comment or note, a thing you did great, so you get you know, 20 little cool slips of, of feedback. You have an assigned evaluator who says the goals of your particular speech this time were to do this and this and this, and you have a few paragraphs of written feedback <laughs> that they also read out so everybody else hears all of your specific written feedback and can improve their own speeches that way too. And they also have a, a table topic time, as they call it. Uh, the table topic master will call on people and ask them a question. Uh, you have one to two minutes to respond. That's somebody time. And it could be as simple as, uh, what was your favorite vacation? Or, please describe the global economy. It's something like that. You never know what it's going to be which is a nice way to make sure your, your brain gears are working. Pichacha, it spelled like Pichacucha, pronounced Pichacha, is Japanese for chit-chat. It is a public speaking competition, uh, but the, the trick there is that your slides auto advance. You have 20 slides that change on their own every 20 seconds. In true Pichacha style, you don't even see them. They're behind you. You have to know in your head. You have to have the rhythm. It's very hard to do, but if you get into one, it is a, a thrilling challenge. And above all, just go places, meet people, learn things, do stuff. Uh, I, I dabble in a lot of different things. Uh, still don't know what I want to do when I grow up. And there's just you know, way too much life out there for me to focus on just one thing or two things. There's a website called Sharpen Design that will give you random questions. Design a set of stickers for a camping gear startup. Design a window vinyl uh, for a bottled tea company and make it geometric. Interesting things. 
locally, here are some of the, the groups that I mentioned. Uh, a lot of references, and all this is up on my site. Uh, check the program. It has my Twitter account. Go to DaveMagley.net and uh, download all my various talks. And we'll do a uh, quick demo, and I'll, I'll skip just the, the contact information is also in the program. Uh, now let's do a little demo have a bit of fun. Uh, all right, uh, I have a, a white ball. It's invisible, but I have a white ball. It is roughly the size of a softball. It has similar properties of a softball. Uh, and I am going to uh, look one of you in the eye, and when our eyes meet, and I know you're paying attention, <coughs> I'm going to say white ball, and I'll throw it to you, and you'll catch it. White ball. All right. He caught the white ball. You throw it to somebody else. Make eye contact. Make sure they're looking at you. And throw the white Tell them you have the white ball. I have the white ball. Okay. You have the white ball. I have the white ball. Florida State never misses a cat. All right. <laughs> he has the white ball. I also have a red ball. It's a little bigger. Uh, it's, it wouldn't hurt as much uh, if, if you were to get hit in the head as a softball. This is white ball. This is more of a kickball type. A little squishy, has a nice bounce to it. Uh, Basketball-ish, kind of. Uh, I have a red ball, and I'm going to throw this as well uh, to somebody. Red ball. He has a red ball. I have a red ball. Keep throwing the white ball. I have a white ball. <laughs> You, you have a red ball. Look somebody in the eye. Throw them the red ball. Find who's going to catch it. Look them in the eye when you know they're ready for it. Then you can red throw ball. the red ball. Red ball. Who wants the white ball? Okay, I got one right here. White ball. White ball. Anybody want the red ball? Red ball. Here you go. Uh, no. <laughs> like, no, 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 no. I got the red ball. I got the white ball. I also have a blue ball. It, it, is, it is a lot larger, but it, uh, but it is ball. very, very light. It's much like a beach ball. Uh, that's right. why it's blue, because it's, it's kind of the color of the water. Uh, this is not the kind of ball I could fling like a, like the white ball or, or bouncy. This one moves slowly and kind of on its own, but it's also very easy to catch. Uh, I have a blue ball. And um, I'm going to throw the blue ball. There you go. Got it. You have the blue ball. <laughs> I got a big blue ball. Yeah. <laughs> so red and white, we can keep on going. This is fun when it's the, the, the first session of the day. Then you'll see, like, throughout the conference, people throwing these balls at each other in, in other talks, and nobody knows what's going on. What are they throwing around? <laughs> <laughs> Who wants red? Hey, who wants the white ball? Hey, blue ball. I think we're having your way. Oh, God. Oh, God. <laughs> White ball, blue ball, Florida State, here you go. White ball. Red. Has he got both? White ball. I still got the blue one. All right, uh, we'll, we'll put that on hold for there, so everybody uh, hold on so, so you know where they are. We don't want to lose them, because they're, they're hard to replace. <laughs> uh, another ball game that we'll sometimes do uh, is to get everybody in a circle. We're not going to do that just now. Uh, but we'll have imaginary ball that we just pass person to person. The trick is, the ball is made of whatever we want it to be made of. So the ball might be made of electricity, and I give it to that person, and then they're carrying the electric ball, and then give it to the next person, and, and, and we run around. When it gets back to when it gets back to the person before the one who started, they change it. So now the ball is made of tickles. It's a tickle ball, and then they give it to the next person who's carrying a tickle ball, and then they give it him. <laughs> a lot of fun. Uh, it's a great way to, uh, uh, to get to know your coworkers too. You could uh, you know, impress your CEO, possibly, by, by giving a tickle ball. I don't know. <laughs> uh, but doing these things, uh, the, oh, and, and besides the improv groups who perform publicly, there are a lot of, of workshops, improv jams, uh, very informal, there's no audience, you just go and practice these things uh, with people. Improv 502 offers one every week. Uh, the Alley Theater used to do it uh, every week. They, they closed down a while back. 
Uh, the Bard's Town occasionally will do it, like once a month, have an improv jam. Uh, that's a great time if you've never tried it before, just to go and practice some of these things. <coughs> so how does this interact with social engineering? Uh, any thoughts from the audience how this might help or hurt the ability to talk your way into or out of something? Spontaneous. Yes, uh, uh, you learn to come up with stuff uh, you're not reading from a script. Uh, if uh, the, if you're trying to break into a building, legally, of course, uh, and the guard stops you, oh, well, I, I, I'm here to do this thing. I didn't come up with that, but he asked me a question I wasn't prepared for. Well, obviously, I'm here for this. If you've been doing this, uh, uh, coming up with weird answers off and on, it isn't really as, uh, as scary to do. You keep your composure. Um, and uh, it, uh, it comes off as a little more sincere because you're not totally freaking out and nervous. Oh, well, well I'm, I'm just here to fix the broken thing. How else? They will let their guard down when they're laughing. Yeah, well, the improv is not always about making somebody laugh. It's about accepting, you know, the yes and the reality. Well, yeah, yes, yes, I, I am supposed to have a badge. Uh, and, and I will get my badge because I'm a visitor. Uh, my friend is supposed to have one for me. It's about, the, the, the more you do it, the more natural it all seems and feels. It sounds scary, but it actually helps me to de-stress. Anybody ever had a, an emergency at the office? Oh no, this thing is wrong, what are we going to do? Uh, well, we'll just do this other thing, it's okay. You know, Yesterday I was, I was a rabbit on a bicycle. It's not a big deal, we'll just... Change this thing, and now it's all right. Uh, the the outside stresses don't seem as weird to me if I make myself go through a very low impact, you know, for for failure exercises. It's kind of a a, a stress practice for me. Uh, anything could go wrong at the office or in life or during travel, but if I practice weird, funny, terrible things a lot. They don't seem as bad. Uh, any other ideas on how this could help with your social engineering techniques? I think a lot of it you just have to think on your feet. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, being ready to, to, to give an answer regardless of, of what the question is. And it, it might be uh, a wrong answer or a stupid or silly answer. But, you ever talk to a, a regular normal person who got a, a wrong or stupid or silly answer? You know, happens to us all the time. But by not being freaked out about being in a situation we're prepared for, uh, it, will, it will help. It's, it, it's not as, as strange. What else? Um, let's try uh, another game. What's a good one for for a crowd that is sitting. <coughs> no. I'll give you another one that we usually do uh, in a circle. Uh, it's, it's a great way to get to know uh, people on their first day that you don't. Imagine you got ten people in a circle. In fact, we have any volunteers. Anybody want to come up and it's going to be totally safe, nothing weird, nobody on the spot. All, all you're doing is learning first names. Yeah, come on up here. And uh, uh, camera, see if you can try to Kind of keep an eye on us here. Uh, a few other folks. One of them. It works best with like six or more. Can we get uh, another couple of volunteers up here? <laughs> oh, thanks. <laughs> didn't even know it came out. Yeah. I thought you were going to try to sell it to them or something. No, no, no. Not today. <laughs> All right. Uh, let's, let's circle up. So, uh, uh, some of our backs to you, I apologize for all of that. Um, we don't know each other. Uh, I am going to uh, point, I'm going to say my first name and point to one of you. You say your first name. I'll keep my finger pointing so you know that I've already gone. Then you point to another person. They'll say their first name until all the fingers are gone or we're, we're done pointing. All right. uh, I'm Dave. Hey, Anthony. I'm Darius. Nick. Jeff. I'm Shay. Mm -hmm. 
<laughs> All right. Uh, so now we're going to do that again. Dave. Uh, same people. Anything. Darius. Nick. Oh, see. <laughs> yeah. You're totally good. See, it's all about learning and doing. Shay. Now we might do the same thing backwards. Starting with him and you pointing back. I'm Shay. Jeff. Nick. Varys. Anthony. Dave. We do this for a little while. It is, it, we know each other's names. It's not as weird to, to practice doing a scene with each other. Uh, that, that's good. Thanks, guys. Thank you. How is that easier to remember than just going in a circle and then saying it once at a time? Uh, because then you only really pay attention to the person next to you or, or, or either uh, side sometimes. This is, uh, it, it kind of gets around weird and, and random. Okay. Um, you can also do a word association kind of thing that uh, uh, we're all in a circle. I pick something, uh, I pick the color blue, and I point to, to somebody and, and they say sky, and they point to somebody else. We go around until we've all picked something. Do the same thing again, you know, blue and then sky, work our way around. Then I'll say blue, point to person, they'll say sky, and while that's happening, I'll say Dave, and then I'll point to Anthony again. So we have two different patterns our names and our word associations going around. Uh, a very simple one, but a great uh, warm up improv exercise. So looking at social engineering and our rules, we have yes and, uh, whether you are doing a, a fish phone call or a fish, if you want to call it that, uh, this makes it a little more natural that, uh, wait, aren't you supposed to have that, uh, that code? Oh, yes, I am supposed to. Uh, uh, my computer is rebooting right now, uh, and I'll have it in uh, 20, 30 seconds, I think. Uh, or it might be writing uh, an email or, or texting back and forth. It might be in person that uh, I'm here to inspect the tapestries. I, I mean, I'm here to look at your data center to, to make sure there are no insects crawling around. Things like that. Uh, connecting. Uh, you don't want to come up with something that is weird for the place that you were going into or that you're talking to. If I'm trying to get into a military base, I probably wouldn't come up with something uh, weird that... Uh, I'm, I'm the new uh, garbage man. I'm here to empty your dumpsters. Maybe I would do that, but uh, it helps to know who you expect to talk to and what kind of things uh, they are used to and they expect. Uh, support your partner. If you have two people going in, working together, uh, you need to back each other up. Uh, yeah, I don't want to uh, uh, call Jim Joe after I've called him Jim already. Because we, uh, we're we obviously using aliases, because we belong here. We, we, we aren't us. We're, we're these people who work here, uh, obviously. Uh, you don't want to get uh, your your stories wrong midstream. Uh, direct focus on action. If you are doing something with your hands, uh, or I drop papers picking them up, uh, that will put the focus on the thing that is happening, rather than looking you at the eye and making you sweat. And wait a minute, I thought you know, you're not on those slips, but if there is something else happening, it can act as a distraction. And follow the fear. Max, it is uh, scary to talk your way into a place where you aren't supposed to be. Uh, most of us are honest-ish people. Uh, but if you want to get, you know, backstage at a concert, you know, it's, it isn't a a pen test job. There are a lot of things we might want to uh, talk our way into. Uh, then doing things that are scary and outside our norm, uh, that's when it gets cool and fun. Doesn't always work, but that will give you a great story. Uh, assuming you're alive at the end of it. <laughs> yeah, it's, uh, I think it might be Chris uh, Hattie he tells a story about going to a military thing, and hey, what if we go at night and check this thing out, and they end up, you know, hands behind the head on the knees, guys with guns pointing. <sighs> I would want to be in that one. Uh, but otherwise, trying to, to get someplace where you're not supposed to be, do something you're not supposed to, 
uh, is informative and fun. And then it also works in reverse. Uh, if you've done some of this, it's uh, you're, you're working me, aren't you? Uh, it becomes a little more obvious that uh, you're just making this up as you go. I, I can tell. Uh, you, you aren't using the same kind of terminology we usually use. You aren't doing it at the, the time of day. We usually do these sorts of things. Uh, as you practice improv, or even just watch and read about improv, uh, it's, it's a good way to make sure that you're, you're on your guard and you can recognize improv behavior in the wild, as it were. There's a, an improv company in New York that I love. They're called Improv Everywhere. And instead of just being up on a stage performing, uh, the guy who founded it couldn't really get an improv gig. He said, you know, I'm just going to get a couple friends. We'll just do something in the middle of kind of a flash mob improv. The first one they did, which became so popular, it is now an annual event, is the No Pants Subway Ride. Uh, a guy would get on the subway... You know, you know, a suit and tie, nice shiny shoes, but underwear, of course, but, but no pants. You're in a briefcase, just, you know, grab what he's riding like normal. Next stop, somebody else gets on without pants. You know, like five, six stops, and then somebody comes on, I'm still with pairs of pants here, one dollar. You know, <laughs> <laughs> uh, he brightened a bunch of people's day just by doing something weird and funny. <coughs> Another one of theirs I like is uh, uh, the Random Parade. Uh, uh, somebody wearing a uh, majorette, is that, is that the right, you know, with the, the big kind of like fluffy red hat and the baton and all that. Uh, just find somebody walking on the street, hey, can you lead our parade? Our parade leader's gone. Oh, we just need somebody to, to be our leader. Can, if you can take this, I'm, I'm going to just go on to, uh, to the ATM over here. Well, dude, that's why you can just, we'll just I'll do the parade and they'll follow you here. Okay, you grab it, and then, then out of the alley, like, 20, 30 people come with their tubas and, you know, doing the whole parade, playing in, and <laughs> then they'll go hide for the next person. Uh, it's, it's just a, a fun way to uh, get some creativity, exercise, give people a story they'll tell forever. <coughs> they'll also do things like uh, just happen to wear blue shirts and khakis and all go to Best Buy at the same time, or, or, or whatever the Best Buy colors are, you know? I like their sensual station. Yeah, uh, but, but they're a lot of fun. I always like to watch them and, and see the creativity and the strange things they come up with. Uh, years ago, I was actually on the, the Drew Carey thing. I uh, got to do a scene with, uh, with some of his guys. Uh, it's always a blast. Uh, I never expected that, but you never know what's going to happen. Uh, if, you, if you don't try, uh, you'll never get there. Oh. Uh, who has done or, or tried to defend against some social engineering attacks in the past? Uh, just did, uh, right before lunch, I got a call about my car warranty. It sounded pretty important. I probably should get on that, you know, like right away. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, get a free knee brace, too. Oh, that, that sounds wonderful. Yeah, All right, good. excellent, yeah. The more of these that you are exposed to and have been a part of, uh, the easier one. Well, mean, we, we all know the Nigerian prince, the, the car warranty, the IRS. Uh, but can you tell when somebody is uh, is tailgating you into your building? You know, I, I swipe the badge, I walk in, and it, it's almost closed. They'll come and walk in. They're, they're busy doing a thing. Maybe they belong. Maybe they don't. They've got six copies. And... Yeah. <laughs> it, it might be somebody. It might, it might be your boss. Yeah. But... We did the, maybe he maybe he got fired two hours ago. You don't know. Yeah. <laughs> maybe he's not your boss anymore. <laughs> yeah. No, so we did that and then we changed. It was just a, a one-hour presentation from social engineering. Mm. We, we tag teamed, and so I started and then I left and came back for our painter's outfit. So yeah. I, the bucket, the, you know, how do you perceive me now? Yeah. That kind of thing. So mm. it uh, changes the perception of what mm. people, the people think the vision. Yeah. Yeah, if you're if you're wearing a uniform, you know, or, or you're carrying a clipboard and you're in a hurry, you can get anywhere. You can go to Goodwill and get in. <laughs> yeah. Ladder. No, that, that's good. I never thought about a ladder. I like that one. People hold the door open for you. Yeah. Uh, I've seen uh, women use the uh, uh, fake pregnancy belly to to, to to hide their their like you know pineapple 
in. Or, or whatever, you know, a lockpicking group they might need just to, just to have it. Yeah, everybody, you know, oh yeah, here, I'll get that for you. Nobody ever asked for badges. Uh, you can get away with what they call pregnancy brain. Oh, I, I, I can't even remember my own name. And, and oh, well, that's fine. You know, my wife did the same thing. Uh, and then they get in, they, they take off the belly, and they, they get to work and then hack into the, the systems. and uh, Lots of ways to, to get past... Uh, you know, one obstacle, then you get the next obstacle, try to find your way in. The more practice you have by you know, going to improv workshops, maybe trying a treat, or even just watching a lot of improv, uh, the more practice you have, the easier it gets. Uh, and you know, focusing on the action. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm carrying all the coffees. Uh, I, I, I just uh, uh, dropped my thing, and it spilled everywhere. Oh my gosh, uh, hold on, let me get this for you. Uh, my friend accidentally spills water on me, and I have to get up and go change. Uh, lots of ways you can use that to help you distract. Because uh, it's all smoke and mirrors, misdirection. I don't want you to know what I'm really doing. I just want to somehow get from here to over there. Uh, oh, but my badge isn't working. I don't know. Well, that's probably because it's not, it's, it's not a badge. It's just a piece of paper that looks like a badge, uh, but but it's not scanning. Uh, but, you know, 20 seconds ago, when the last person went in, I recorded the badge beep sound. So I can press the button. Beep. Uh, it's not working. Beep. It's not, hey, I'm not sure. What, can, can I go into the, to the security desk? You know, beep. And, and they can fix me up. And re it must have got degassed, you know, held it too close to, 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 to my magnet that I keep in my pocket. I don't know. <laughs> Uh, yeah, the, the action, the props, things to do uh, besides just me and you make it a lot easier to to get the focus away from me doing something naughty. I might be doing something naughty right now. You wouldn't even know. And uh, the mistakes are gifts. Uh, if you're on a, a pen test assignment, you want to get caught. Uh, well, you know, sort of. You know, that's the goal is to teach people to catch us. Uh, it's great if we can get two or three steps in and say, here are you know a couple things you can, can fix. But if they are totally on the ball, that is great news. We, we failed because they're awesome. And that is wonderful news to give. Uh, a lot of ways to find out information uh, about the targets. Uh, oh, I always like the, the no-tech OS yet. Uh, looking at the, the ball cap Somebody's wearing, hey, you know, my daughter goes to, to that college or something. And Johnny Long does a great one about just looking at stickers on the backs of people's car. I know how many kids you have. I know where to school. I know how you vote. Or looking at what you can find sitting on the dash. There was a great talk at this conference five years ago about dumpster diving. Oh, yeah. uh, that uh, you, you make a big splash. I'm, I, I'm the... Uh, the security auditor, I'm walking through the building, hey, I'm, I'm going to be looking at all the trash, things like that. Uh, and then I crumple up a, uh, uh, a, a red post-it note, put it in a garbage bag, crumple up a, red, a yellow one over here, a green one, so I know where those came from when I check the garbage tomorrow. I know which desk or which area. And well, this, I want to look for this specific department. I'll leave my little color code things. Now I know where I'm hidden. Don't I have to like look at every bag. Yeah. I like what that guy did as well when he said that they kind of got wise to him. And then he went to the cleaning crew and said, give me a dollar for every bag in my office. And they did. Yeah. <laughs> yep. What do they care? Yeah. But they, they, they're, they're, they're almost always uh, contracted. They, they aren't usually employees of, well, whatever. Yeah, I'm just getting this much an hour, you know. Fresh. Yeah. Um, let's go for another game. Let's see, another, what's a good sit-down game? Um, like, can I get one person, one volunteer, to come up and do a, do a thing? <coughs> or not. I, uh, thank introverts. <laughs> <laughs> I'm an introvert myself. Uh, I'm actually, I'm, I'm kind of an omnivert. I'm, I'm all the verts now. You know, I'm an uh, intro and extroverts. Uh, I, I can switch back uh, as the I've, I've learned it. Uh, getting in front uh, of people, 
It's scary. Uh, I, I realized in college that I was afraid of, of public speaking. Like, all things considered, that's kind of a silly thing to be afraid of. Uh, so I, that's one of the main reasons I got the job at the campus radio. Well, if I come up to see the people, I can probably talk to them. And, and, and that was okay. You know, it worked out all right. And then I got a job as a TA. Well, if, if I know something they don't know, and they're paying to be there to listen to me, I can probably do that. And, and, and that, that went okay. And then, ah, this is whatever. I can talk to you. It's not that, that big a deal. Uh, then when I had my stroke years ago, I had to learn how to get it uh, all working together again. And uh, Toastmasters helped me with that. I gave a little over 50 speeches in one year, various places around. And that really helped me get my rhythm, my confidence, uh, my voice as a speaker. Uh, usually prepared speeches or training. Uh, sometimes off the cuff, I won a uh, citywide uh, humorous speaking contest where we random questions. I think we had 20 some odd entrants. The, the one that got me advanced to the next round was that the mayor just put you in charge of transportation for the city. Uh, what do you do to smooth out Louisville's transportation problems? I knew I had to make it memorable and interesting for people to say, you know, this is one of the guys who should advance. People would say, you know, buses like rails, change the roads. No, no, no. Zeppelins. We need Zeppelins. You bring Zeppelins into the city, you know, people hang on to bungees and, and just float around where they need and went on like that for a couple minutes. And, uh, yeah, that guy's interesting. We'll, we'll let him go to the next round and work his way up, you know. Uh, the, the ridiculous can be fun. Uh, and the, 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 the stranger you get when you practice, uh, the easier it gets when you have to do it for real. If you want to be able to make more gestures uh, or, or give more body language in public, then when you practice, I need to make wild gestures and weird things just to, to get my body... Okay, so when I do it for real, I'm like this. Seems a little more natural, a little more confident. You know, I've done... Uh, you get to the point where you can do keynotes, you know, an hour-long thing, on a couple minutes notice. Most of my speeches, I've got like three bullet points and kind of make it up from there. I have fun with my uh, preaching because I usually preach at weirdo events. You know, comic cons, game cons, punk concerts, uh, horror conventions, things like that. So I get to preach about zombies and pirates and aliens and weird things, which makes it fun. How am I going to make this all fit? You find a way to get creative and then do some things. And it's all about the improv, being accepting the situation you're in, adding to it, making it stronger or better. Uh, improv comedy, it's, it's very improv, not as much comedy. Uh, we are trying to be funny. The scene is funny. You don't have to try to be funny because that's what the environment provides. It's all about working with your scene partner or partners. Uh, and if I have to be four people in the same scene, just flipping back and forth. So when I get out into reality and I have to social engineer my way into or out of something, yeah, I've, I've already tried this 20 different ways. It's not as weird or as hard. Just like with uh, any muscle, uh, our, our brain is an organ. The more we use it, uh, the stronger it will get. Uh, as we as we come up with new ideas and approaches, we develop new neural pathways. The more that neurons fire down that pathway, the stronger it gets, the more natural it feels. So if I keep doing everything the same way over and over, I've got this really strong mental rut that's in me. But if I try it a little differently, then I have a, a new way. It's not as strong, but it's there. I can do it again, make it stronger. Uh, how many of us drive to and from work the same way all the time? I try to, at least every couple of weeks, 
take a, a back road or some a way I've never been. Uh, might be faster. Probably not. It's probably going to be slower. <laughs> but I'll see a part of the city Throw that maybe I don't off. see very often. Throw your tail off. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Got to change rides. Yeah, yeah. I'll hop in a taxi. Yeah. Uh, you never know who's following you. It's probably him. <laughs> At uh, DerbyCon, they'd always have a, uh, a Hack Your Derby competition. Uh, either you buy a, a, a real derby hat, or they'll give you a cheap you know, 10-cent plastic hat. Uh, you take this plus whatever you have on hand and decorate it. Some people will get uh, all out and have one with mechanical parts, uh, you know, pineapples or, you know, lighting up disco things. Uh, a few years ago, I won by taking uh, police crime scene tape that I had in my trunk. We all have police crime scene tape in our trunks, right? And making a thought crime hat, you know. Because it's all about what you have on hand as part of the competition to make and this just a way to be creative with what you have around you. A couple years ago, I took a bunch of derbies and stapled them together inside out, making a 12-sided hat. Uh, I could swim it upside down, and now uh, so I, I made a new derby <laughs> dihedron hat uh, that I could take off and roll with numbers on the inside. Uh, didn't know it would work until I had finished stapling together. Yes, it fits, and I can make it stay on my head. Things like that make it uh, uh, help exercise the creative side of our brain. Uh, growing up, I was uh, an artist, switched to math and tech later, but I also minored in psychology and philosophy uh, to understand how the digital world works, and also how our brains work, and also how the, the meta-reality works. I still don't know any of it, but uh, that's the theory, you know. Uh, try to use your left and right half of your brains. Uh, the skills you develop in improv are creativity and communication. And those are the two most sought after soft skills in this field, in, in almost any field. Getting new ideas, new approaches and ways to do things, and understanding and uh, protecting back out with your teammates. Uh, learning how to talk the same language uh, as my, my old improv coach would say, <coughs> improv improves every other area of your life. You might be overselling a little, but not that much, I don't think. By improving my creativity, communication skills, it's, it's a lot easier to get ahead at the office. Uh, it's easier to, uh, to trick my kids into behaving. Uh, easier to, to get out, even to, easier to, to manage my own life and tendencies. Uh, easier to, to manage projects and goals. Uh, because I've, I've had experience at looking at things many different ways. The more I do that, uh, the more natural it feels. Uh, and my, my coach always said, Paul the Fear, awesome is on the other side of fear. I've done a lot of things I've never done before because I've never done this. Why, why, why not try it? You know, never thought I would be in a movie. Uh, never thought I would write a play. Uh, never thought I would write a book. Uh, never thought I would found uh, uh, several companies. Uh, never thought I would do. Like, I mean, I still know what I do most of the time, so it's kind of a new surprise every day. But by intentionally doing things odd. Or, or, or strange, uh, or unusual. Uh, that way, I don't have the same you know, 10 ruts in my neural pathways doing the same stuff the same way all the time. My last job, I was at the same company, but I had five different jobs in the five years I was there. I went from developer to scrum master to uh, master data manager uh, to QA on the tech side, and I think something else. Uh, very different parts of IT. Uh, I want to jump back and forth between them all because I have learned to do things a little differently as I go. Uh, any thoughts on uh, social engineering and how improv might help as we get ready to close? Yeah. yeah, so I can see how socially how this would be important to be able to get to outside of your comfort zone, mm -hmm. learning how to do that, to be able to do 
social engineering. Is that the biggest hurdle that you think for, for first time social engineering, especially on a face to face basis, like trying to get into a building? Or is it something else? <laughs> it is feeling comfortable inside your own skin and role, I think, is, is the main thing. Uh, if you look nervous, then you act nervous. You can see that you're nervous, that makes you feel more nervous, and it feeds on itself. But if it's just, hey, I'm, I'm, I'm here to, to help Bob uh, with the thing, I'll be here 20 minutes, how do you hear it before you know it, then it's it's a lot easier to get things done. So just having a, a safe practice area before you have to take it out and put yourself on the line. It'll help develop the, the confidence, uh, the, uh, the creativity to come up with something as you need, because you do it all the time. You uh, think that distraction works really well in social engineering. Uh, I mean, you know, it seems like the more things that are going on, the less mm -hmm. time somebody has to focus on a specific, yeah. you know, portion of it. And, you know, you, you, you've got them, you know, kind of mm -hmm. running around, you know, hair on fire, you know, yeah. kind of thing. You know. uh, it, it does help a lot. Uh, uh, anybody uh, in law enforcement or adjacent, uh, a, a lot of criminal duos will, you know, if I'm trying to rob the jewelry store, uh, I'll ask the clerk a couple weird questions, have him reach that thing behind the counter and turn his back so my partner over here can do this other thing because they're all busy or I'll, I'll, I'll accidentally, you know, knock over the, the spinning rack of things. Oh no, uh, you know, can I help you pick them up? And while we're looking there, Something else is going on. Yeah, uh, they have. You know, th that is their job is to steal things by distracting, yeah. and uh, we can learn from them as well. Yeah, I think I, I saw a YouTube that uh, was at DEF CON uh, several years back, and a young lady there at uh, uh, there was a reporter, and, and she's a social engineer, and mm -hmm. told him that she could probably figure out. You know yeah. uh, what his bank account was, and uh, so you know the whole scenario. He said, "Well, you know, I don't think you can. You know, my bank's pretty good, and I trust them, and, and everything." And she went in and, and she called the bank and claimed to be his wife. And then next thing you know, you hear she's got her phone and she gets to see on her phone and a baby starts crying. A baby crying, crying sound. You know, out. baby crying yeah. sound. Oh, I'm sorry. Yeah. And then she starts getting a little upset on the phone and she's going, my husband told me to do this and I, you know, and I, 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 don't, I don't know, know why I got dropped from the know. account. I was well, on so, there for six yeah, years. Yeah. I, I'm going to get in trouble, you know, and, and the baby's crying and all this stuff is going on and, and they literally gave her the, the account number yep. on the phone. You know, Added her to the system. Now she has full rights to go in. Yeah, and, yeah. I mean, changed his password. You know, yeah, and he's yeah. like, "What?" Yep. <laughs> so I mean, you know, it, it, all those tools, you yeah. know, work, and she was perfect at that. Yeah, that, that's a, that's a class. We'll look up. I think Voice Fish Baby Cry or something, and, and you'll find yeah. that one. It's like yeah. five, six yeah. minutes yeah. long. It's, it's an incredible example. It was like a deaf time. Yeah, yeah. Um, I was wondering if you practice with a voice changer software. Uh, I don't, uh, although I, I don't tend to focus on, on the, the voice. I, I'm more in person. Well, I know, but you're talking, so you have to pick words that a woman would say. Oh, if, if I were to, 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 to masquerade as a woman? Yeah. Uh, I, I've got, like, some costumes and such, but... Uh, <laughs> <laughs> well, I meant but only for special occasions. <laughs> engineering on the phone. There's another YouTube that came out recently. Mm -hmm. I saw on LinkedIn. So. Okay. Uh, yeah, no, on... Uh, uh, <laughs> Chris on uh, uh, social-engineer.org uh, is uh, lots and lots of great information there. Uh, he found that women are like 80% more effective than <laughs> men on, on voice calls or something. Uh, so now it's, women do all the things in his company when it talks when it goes to fishing. And that's also a good thing for uh, parts of the country and access, things like that. Uh, you want to try to... You know, a New York person in Texas would, would stand out the way they talk, uh, vice versa. Uh, Kentucky, we sound like uh, we don't have shoes no matter where we go. You know, <laughs> we, not that much we, we can, uh, can help with that, uh, except travel and experience, going, learning, doing. Now, that is what's going to help all of us with all the things that we need to do. Uh, any one last question before we close here? 
All right. Well, then uh, go forth and uh, make stuff up. <laughs>